So we rolled up the headwaters and we found these two jokers. Dude, tactical bass. So I wonder who's gonna catch more fish. I think they are, but, but we'll find <laughs> out. Probably one of the best channels on YouTube if you dig hashtag real fishing content, things that like teach you to like catch more, learn about kind of the sport, learn about how fish behave, and some cool ass videos flat out. So we're gonna see if we can try to catch more. We'll catch them at the ramp later and see, see what they caught. Later guys. See you, see you, man. Good job, Bob. So I got kind of a cool video plan for you guys. I, I got a bunch of superstars. You guys saw a tactical bass that we ran into out here. There's all these hashtag pros, but we're not really worried about them. We, we like the YouTube guys. But I got my boy Keith here. Keith presents a completely different philosophy of bass fishing. that you usually don't find in Florida. You find it on the West Coast a little bit more, and we're gonna talk about it. It has to do with his hat actually has it. Swim baits, swim bait underground. Swim bait underground. Keith, where can they find you on Instagram too? K7E6ITH, Keith Wilson. He has some epic like swim bait videos from Florida. Florida swim bait culture. And we're gonna talk to him about that because seriously, he takes a totally different perspective on bass fishing in Florida that you do not see every day. So we're gonna break that down. We are at beautiful Headwaters Lake, one of the newest lakes in Florida and probably one of the best. Hopefully we're gonna do some punching. It's kind of a pre-spawn spawn, giant cold front went through. But we're gonna tap into Keith's swim bait knowledge, learn some stuff and hopefully catch some big bass. So come along with me, hit that like and subscribe button. Bog, you ready to go fishing dude? Bog is even a unicorn today, it's that cold. Let's do this thing, gentlemen. That was the only edge of the boat. I don't know, I, 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 look, I, I was looking down at my friggin' phone. <laughs> and I heard, I hear the power pull. What the f did I just touch? And I just off the boat. Tactical bass. Here we go. So I told you there'd be the juice. We'd talk about the swim bait. So here's what Keith does. Keith is like committed to this swim bait stuff fishing. Like right now, that's the Citizen 7, right? Yes. Okay, so he's got this giant freaking hunk of plastic. I'll actually show it to you. He gave me a couple of smaller versions right here. It's these guys right here. And he puts them on like an owner beast hook. Uh, and it's a belly weighted hook. And actually it's a perfect example because it kind of shows you what he's doing. So we got isolated cane right here, basically like just an isolated target. We've talked about it in like the Kissimmee video with the pads and that. And he just launched it out kind of across that. And then watch his retrieve, dude. He's kind of like slow reeling it and then he like pops it. And that bait's a weedless bait, so it kind of sits on the bottom and then it like pops out of the grass almost like a trap, but there's nothing there that it'll like cling to other than the bait itself because there's no open hooks. What are, what are some keys to like fishing this thing? Because you almost have it on the bottom and you're not dragging it, but you're popping it. Like, popping it. Yeah. what are some things you'd recommend for somebody who wants to get started on throwing these jokers? These things, like this, with these bigger baits, for just I do this right now because it's so cold. And to get that react, I'm looking for that reaction bite more because I know they're not really hungry, but I, you know, but the, uh, in the spring, what's coming up, whew, steady retrieves, a couple twitches, but don't stop at steady retrieves. That's going to, that's going to be key. And that's the best time to do this in my book. So people that do want to get started, definitely start in a month or so and go for, you know, until end of May and you're going to success with these bigger baits, especially from Florida, this hydrilla. So what that sounds like to me is it really translate like anything else you're throwing, but you're using a bigger bait. You're keeping that, that grass contact. You're, you're kind of using the, the grass to sort of pop the bait and react just like you would like a worm. I'm actually amazed how much he's fishing it kind of like you'd fish either like a trap or maybe a chatter bait with that kind of like popping kind of like real approach. And this thing's it's weedless, like we said, so you can throw it 
into we're actually throwing in some sticks he's throwing in some cane and then you have that submersion vegetation that that hydrilla so you can kind of sink it down there into the hydrilla and pop it right out just using the reel and it, it gets dude i saw him get some bites that he didn't actually like close the deal on it's crazy dude they like pop the line like the line will jump and then you point your rod at it and reel down and set the hook it's almost kind of like live bait fishing in a way but i think that's also the key too there's a lot of brim and a lot of shiners out here and his baits are a little bit darker you know they, they still look like shad you know like they're they're big but at the same time like they look like what the forage is like a, a a brim or like a shell cracker even these big bass even eat like big catfish and the trick is is like it's staying in that water column where you'd actually shiner fish where you would live bait fish and you fish it fast but really his retrieve is kind of you know he's kind of inching it along except for those pops and i've always believed that it if you could figure out a way to like mimic a shiner down here especially like a golden shiner or a wild shiner you would absolutely kill it and that's exactly what he's doing and dude they eat giant shiners like i've seen guys throw eight nine inch shiners, shiners. yeah dude. dude and they catch huge ones dude and they'll throw it around places where we throw our normal baits a trap a chatterbait a worm and we don't do anything but you pick these things up that mimic that, you might not get a lot of bites. That's been the other key, dude. I give Keith like props. He's a trooper, dude. I think he's caught like two or three today, and it's been a grind anyways, but he's literally just trying to get that one or one two bites, bite, dude. <laughs> that one. Go big or don't go at all. But remember the summertime bite in these baits that I've noticed, see what's super fun, it got me really hooked, was when it, the hydrilla, isolated hydrillas coming up the patches and it would roll up and it hit the top and these things would jump out of the water and just right. bomb dropped. Oh, it's insane. You think a frog, but dude, it, that, that's what got me. I'm like, it's nuts. Nuts. Seriously. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's that. It's like belly water flopping gets on hot, it, Oh, just rolling and dude, I've seen him come out and just really just boom. It's nuts. It is. It'll trip you out, man. And that's what got me like, whoa, this is this is a whole nother thing, you know. And after that, then started doing more stuff. But that summertime bite, if you can get a good day and that happens, you, you will never put it down. It's crazy. So that's the big key. It's it's addicting. I don't know if I got the balls to try it and commit to it, but yeah, he's like it'll change you, dude. Like you want a big swim bait fish, you're gonna you got to leave all your conventional at home. That's what I did. I put all my stuff back. I said, dude, I'm gonna take two, three rods out, and that's it. And my punch rod, of course, I love punch. Yeah, yeah. Got a punch mouth, but I left it all there and over and over. And then, dude, I caught like you know nine or eight or something one day, and the dump and just the way, it's just everything about it. After that, I was just hooked. But yeah, you're gonna cry and cry and go home scratching your head and mad a lot though. I like that kind of fish. That's pretty cool. So be prepared to cry, bring your tissues, but bring a big bait, dude, because it it's a very cool way to fish. And I think the best part about it with all the pressure that these lakes get, they eat it, dude, and you can catch giants. And then you can throw your, your swimmy shimmer and who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Or we'll be lucky than good. Oh, yep. <laughs> I have no idea, dude. <laughs> dude, that's a good fish. Dude, I, I don't even know what just happened there, dude. <laughs> dude, he nibble dicked it like six times six and then eight, yes yeah, a weird dude i've never seen a broke back that big dude that was weird that was freaking weird so it's been like two hours and we have flipped a whole bunch of that stuff and keith is back there slanging a big old swim bait so we're kind of dimensionalizing our approach you know cast as well as kind of like fish details you know pitch focus on cover and that and dude i pitched into that mat and it just goes to show you so the water temp it's like 58 degrees which for most of the guys watching this video they're like yeah that's not that cold that's cold dude for florida anything below 60 is freezing and these fish get really weird and i pitched in there and I, I just felt them go kind of tick. A lot of times the smaller fish will kind of tap at your bait. I'm like, oh, that was interesting. You know, I'd like to catch a fish. It's been two hours on one of the best lakes in the country. So I just left it in there. And lo and behold, I was way out of position. But that jugger sucked it back in. And this is her. We're going to let her go. I've never seen a broke back bass look this big, dude. Like, that is. Okay. okay. And 
she's obviously just fine. So. There we go. Yeah, but I mean, just a fat. It does go to show you how healthy they are here. But look at that fish. It's got that that broke back to it. Well, let's get her released. Put her back. So now I'm super confused because Keith wants to go throw like those stretches, like some hydraulic grass stuff up there, which I was totally down with about like four minutes ago. But now like this stuff's starting to look kind of good. So we're gonna play around a little bit more. I still think he's gonna catch a mondo on that, on that that swimming shimmer, dude, and it's gonna be cool. Oh, there she is. Nope, but she, uh, dude, she clunked it. <laughs> well, that was kind of cool. So Keith put us on a little pattern. We've been struggling to get bites, guys. And I got, dude, she wasn't coming off. I didn't think I put it to her that much. But I got a classic Florida bait. It's just a black blue tip, fat ace, a Texas rig with a quarter ounce. But Keith was like, we got this flat right here, and there's something magical about this one little section. He didn't know what it was, but, like, it's kind of funny how you find that with Florida lakes where you get into these little stretches and it's dead, 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 dead. And then for like 40 yards, it's golden. And uh, that was a quick bite for not getting many bites today. You sure? He's got it. Dude, <laughs> no way, no way, no way, dude, no way, no way. Keith, you are now the god of the people, dude. You are now the god of the people. Dude, that was so awesome, Dev. Dude, this guy is the cool, look how she ate that. Bro. Yeah, see, I see how long I waited still, still So we're gonna talk about exactly what just happened, but I mean, not a giant, like four and a half, dude, but yeah, like something. she chonked it. <laughs> it's all about the goo you put on there too. Oh, yeah, right? baby. <laughs> Gotta have that scent sometimes. <laughs> fire them up. That is so cool. But well, that's my secret for you to find out. Oh. Right, let's get this thing released. Thank you for no stop. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up, but we're gonna do exactly what I promised. We're going to talk to Keith about what baits he recommends to try, what these setups are, because you need specialized kind of terminal tackle, or not even terminal tackle, but rod reel setup to throw some of this stuff. And I just want to tap into his knowledge base, because this is something I do want to try. I think the, the hardest part about what I've seen today hanging out with Keith is the literal amount of commitment you need to do to throw these baits. Like you you almost can't bring, like he said earlier in the video, you can't bring another rod. You can't bring your standard stuff. You gotta grab like your swim baits, you know, whatever your two or three setups are and go to town with them. But if there's somebody who wants to do this in Florida, I guess it applies wherever, and it's spring, it's a good time to try it. What are two, let's do the swim baits first. What are two swim baits to have? And then we'll break down your rod and reel setup. Well, if you want to get into it first, you definitely want to start out with the six citizen. That's my choice of of choice for start out. You know, get bit a couple times and get that. What do you call that? Get that. Uh, get that confidence. Get confidence up. going. Yeah. You this will get bit a lot more easier than the citizen seven will. And that's a big jerk you're throwing. It's a bigger at the end one. Of the day. It's a bigger one. Yeah. This is a seven inch citizen. You got all these this, rigged up on owner. Those are yep, all beast? owner beast hooks. There's with a, this bait is designed for it's designed for the owner beast hook mike made this bait design it's got an air chamber if you take it out it's got an air chamber inside it's for the collapse i'll show you the collapse very easy to rig make sure everything's centered but when they you know when they eat this bait it collapses perfectly it's got that it air just pops the hook, pops out. The hook out right in there good and uh you know when you set the hook for these things too a lot of people a lot of people i've taken with me or told people that you got to let them eat it that's the most important thing. If you don't let them eat this bait and you go to uh, set the hook, you feel a tap, a tap, and you set, you're not going to get nothing unless it, it was a 10 pounder and he just ate it. And you might get lucky, but you got to wait definitely to set the hook, especially with a seven, or especially I'm going to go to here and show you the nine. Have you actually caught fish on that? I have not yet. Yeah, that's nine. what I'm going but to do. That's the Mondo. That's, that's the Mondo for me to conquer my. <laughs> 
Hopefully it's going to happen in March or April. You know, yeah, you got to, and it's, a lot of this is about timing too, timing, I think we yeah, talked about. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not something that you're going to do if your water's like bitter freezing or something like that, but it's when you know there's an opportunity for catching a big one and you want to capitalize on catching the biggest one possible, this is what you grab. Quick question about that owner beast. For guys that are fishing stuff like what we're fishing, five foot, three foot in the grass, what weight, belly weight size do you well, recommend? This, th this one... I recommend a seven with a, if you're fishing, you know, kind of shallow from like maybe eight to two feet, whatever, half ounce. But before, this is the only thing they did have though, okay. was the half ounce. Now they make it in three quarter on the 10 on. Okay. Now the six, you know, if you, yeah, if you want to fish it deeper with a three quarter, you know, it goes down faster. You can bump the bottom, bump, 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 you know, on the rocks, whatever you're fishing. Now this six requires actually a six o six aught hook and it comes with a quarter ounce. Okay. But... I use the eight aught, which is the eight aught three eighths bottom. The uh, but now tackle or owner is making them, making them with half ounce and three quarter, and I yet to I yet not uh, use the three quarter, which I'm going to use soon hopefully. But I have used a half. I used a half. I'm fishing like ten or deeper, and I'll use a three eighths if I'm fishing like more shallower stuff. Because like I said in Florida, you know these fish to me, they're always they're always on the bottom. They're either yeah. too hot or they're too cold. That's just the way I feel about it. So I want this bait. I want it to go down as much as it can. And know? then you can pop it up from if there I want and it, do exactly. what you want to if do I with want it. it. If I want it to come up, I can come up with it. And that's why I always fish these high-speed you know, reels. I fish the All right, so let's get to that. So yeah. it's the tranks, the Shimano tranks. Yep. You have 25-pound fluorocarbon 25 on there. On this one, yes. Uh, you got a hog tech handle, that big yeah. crank. It's kind of the yeah. same thing as what I God do with have, my crankbait God handles. God has a big handle. Yeah. God have the handle. And but then I, do you have specialized rods you're throwing these on? or low-down custom okay rods how would you this, describe like the, the action on your on these like uh, if it, like to a standard rod guy like is it is it like a heavy extra heavy me, like, personally i throw i'll here i'll run it down how i throw what i throw with okay. the size i like to throw the six actually on the seven nine medium heavy okay with 25 or 20 pound depending how thick i'm in hydro okay if i'm throwing the seven i like the seven to be on an eight heavy okay you know, two of your seven. I like that a little stiffer, you know, rod for yep. that. When I set the hook, I don't want too much. I want to just. I, I do like, like a lot of people do say when they swim bait. I like kind of like broomsticks. I do. I okay. Like, I'm. I want it to set. And then you just drag them in. Yeah. yeah. When I use braid though, extra heavy. Extra heavy. Extra heavy. And that's all they throw. Extra heavy. I throw the seven point five of, and I'll throw the nine and stuff like that. When I'm in thick hydrilla. If you're in thick hydrilla, sixty-five pound braid, extra heavy, low down custom rod tranks 300 seven what is that yeah 7.6 i don't use low gear, gear ratio i use high gear ratio. oh you do use a little I, faster reel yeah, okay i have to man because like you can always slow down yeah i agree That's with when you people there. say oh i use five i'm like i i, I can slow down you know well and especially with the grass because you got to keep that bait up yeah, sometimes man, and that yeah. that makes sense Just, so i think all right so we're going to talk about another swim bait in a second but i think at least personally if i were going to try this this is the guy I would start with just because the one I'm about to show you has some treble hooks on it so it limits a little bit of where you can throw it this guy you could probably throw anywhere whether you got grass whether you got rock whether you got you know sticks because it's going to ride through pretty clean so it's going to hang up from time to time but let's move on to something that you can use in a little more open water or over the hydrilla it's this guy we actually saw you throw it a couple times today what is this thing this is a DRT tiny clash Tiny Clash, this and it's a glide the, style bait. Yeah, I'm new to this too. Okay. I've been throwing this bait for only two weeks, and it's been very successful for me. And I've been talking to Mike Gilbert on how to fish it, and you know, and he's the one actually gave me this bait to try it. You know, I was curious. Right. So, man, I'm curious, man. I just want to see. You know? uh, I'm curious. I thought, you know, I was like, this thing's at trouble. I want to rip this thing through some lighter hydro and see what happens. And sure as shit, the damn thing works. It works amazing. Especially for the cold right now, the way the reaction bite, you know, right. rip, stall. On, but yeah, this is the this is the tiny class joy thief. This is his uh, this is his collab with DRT. It's a DRT, but it's a really cool bait. You can take you know you can take this tail like right now it's up. You can take this out like I said earlier, put it upside down. It's gonna go swing side to side to two to three foot range. It seems like what I'm doing with right. it. The way it is now, it just kind of like spins and goes crazy, which I like that too. I've also heard I haven't tried it yet. You can take the tail completely out. And I think it acts almost like it's on top like you can yeah like skitters yeah, around yeah. and that uh, and then actually too i don't have it with me it's in my boat but there's a lip you can pull in and out if i want to fish it deeper i just put that lip in there and i can crank it down and it'll, it'll do more stuff too 
So this is the one that I think they both kind of look like amazing cool bait. (laughs) Well, and I saw it in the water. And the one thing I know, like I've seen shiners and stuff. We kind of talked about it, but I've seen like shiners scattered around. And what's interesting with this guy is it really looks like, like when you put a shiner out on the float and it kind of does that circle or that back and forth, you'll see your float go back and forth. And that glide, like, or whatever it is, like glide style bait, I guess it does that sort of like those shiners will dart and they'll pause and it darts and pauses and he's using we, we showed some of the retrieves he's using that same kind of like slow wongo like that the, you know that, that click and retrieve and then it just causes that bait to dart well, when i first got it i wanted i want that's what i was trying to, as you can see look at it it's getting it's getting bit <laughs> it's not yeah. like any bit but i wanted it to see like act like it's like a dead fish almost like let it stop and then this one actually the way i have it set up with the tail it goes down about two three feet and it's a floater one, and then she'll rise real slow, real slow. Right. You know, but it seems like today, actually, today was the first time I tried it with the tail upside down. She was riding more top wise, as okay. you saw. I mean, we had yeah, a follower, yeah. and it was kind of like going way in, way out, way in, then straight then, you know. And so you can adjust it for action as well as depth, depth, too, yeah, like to play around lip, with whatever. it. I tried it with the first, when, when I first came here, when I first got it with the lip. Oh my God, what a nightmare. Yeah, I with, yeah <laughs> that, that makes sense. But I, as soon as I took the lip out, instant just. It was crazy how it Do just you change rods with this? Do you have a no, softer I, tip rod, or is it the same deal? I use the 7.9 medium heavy for this okay. with 20 pound. With 20 pounds. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit lighter line, lighter but not line, much. Yeah. I just, and so you it know, almost suspends, too, kind what's of. That? It almost suspends a exactly, little bit. Exactly, yeah. Kind of, I, you don't want that bait down deep, though. I want no, it dude. mid to high, because if it goes too low, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. Yeah, especially with where we fish. Yeah, exactly. That's why I got these guys. These are my, you know. I actually really like shoes. those, yeah. dude, because they're kind of four-wheel drive. You, you can really them. throw it anywhere, and you can't do it wrong. Because what, what I really found interesting, so I caught one on, a like, a stick bait, you know, just dragging. And I was kind of curious, because I watched Keith fish the, the this guy, the citizen, mm-hmm. um, and he wasn't dragging it like a worm, but he was using, he was like slow reeling it and then he'd pop it. And literally I was doing the exact same thing with, with my rod tip with the worm. So he's almost fishing it, like worming it through the grass, but with his reel versus me doing it with the rod tip yeah. with the worm, which I found interesting because then you can cover some water. I'm trying to fish it slow. But, but fish slow still, yeah. yeah. But that's kind of the breakdown. If you guys got any questions about this, what is, what's your Instagram? Where can they message you at? You can, uh, Instagram is K7E6ITH, Keith Wilson. And uh, just DM me if you don't have any questions about it. I'll sure. put links to all this stuff at Tackle Warehouse, and then I think you get a lot of stuff from Working Class Zero, yes, right? You, yeah, if you want these baits, these soft baits, you go to workingclasszero.com. You sign up for the newsletter. These baits drop. He, he, he send you an email when you sign up for the newsletter, and these baits drop, and they drop quick. When he drops them, they go fast. They go super fast. You got to be like speedy fingers man or you gotta be super cool like me and, and no keith <laughs> i got some but i'll put a link to working class zero dude check them out i mean it's very you might not like it like i'll be perfectly yeah. honest with you you might not like doing this not and you everybody. yeah dude so like, like it's something you might want to try but for guys who have I, you know i look at it a lot as that that musky mentality guys who freaking are going out there for like two bites a day one bite yeah. a day and they want it to be a giant or you want to try to capitalize on the biggest fish in your lake like this is the way to do it and let me tell you i watch keith catch like it's probably like a foreign change not not the biggest fish in the world but dude i lost it and I didn't even catch the fish. Watching him like follow the the bite with the rod tip and reel down and set the hook and just see this thing go. Rawr, rawr. And he even caught he caught a big old mud fish, which probably not gonna put in the video. <laughs> but dude, like to see a bigger fish, this thing was like 12, 15 pounds, like a big fish hooked up on it. It's stupid. Like it's really it's intense, and you're working a whole bunch for not a like it's a big reward, but not many rewards. But like. It, it, it was really cool. I don't even know how to explain it. It's something you guys got to experience for yourself. Keith, yeah, I appreciate you walking yeah, me man, through all this stuff. Sure. Definitely check out Keith. Thank you guys for watching the video. Bog, do you want to go swim bait? No, you want to go eat dinner. <laughs> Everybody throw a like on there for Bog and uh, subscribe if you like it. But I'm kind of a tool, so I probably wouldn't subscribe. But thank you guys for watching and supporting the content. It's cool to talk to guys that have a different knowledge base and a different focus than I do. And I hope you guys take something away with it or away from it. But hope you enjoyed the video we'll see you back out on the water or talking baits maybe swim baits doing something with fishing next time peace